Hey everyone, it's Sandra, and today I thought I would do kind of just like casual, chatty type of video. Now, I am a big, big foundation whore, and I almost wanted to create a tag, like a foundation whore tag or something, but foundation is one of my favorite things to buy and to try as a makeup obsessed person. Foundations and lipsticks. And then I think maybe eyeshadows would probably be number three. But those those are my favorite things to buy and to try out. I started getting into makeup out of necessity. When I was a teenager and approaching my late teens, I had really, really bad acne. And that's the reason I started wearing makeup. That's the reason I made my first ever trip to, I think it was a Clinique counter, and I got their powder foundation and their, um, their liquid foundation. And then I tried the MAC Studio Fix powder. Those were the, the first interactions I really had with makeup when I was about 16 years old so foundation just has always been one of my big my big things I love buying foundation and trying out new foundations I still get occasional breakouts uh, mostly in my chin area that are hormonal and I do have oily combination skin so most of the foundations that I have cater to that and I put myself on a ban. I am not going to buy any new foundations until I use up at least two out of these. And I'm very close to using up a few. But before I, you know, before I turn over anything, I thought I would just go over all the foundations that I have right now. And I have nine, which is kind of insane because I have, yeah, nine foundations that are on, on rotation. So I keep them all in this little box here. And I have some foundation samples too, but I'm not going to go over that. I'm just going to go over all the foundations that I have right now. If you have a makeup channel and if you want to do this as well, I would love to see your video because I just, I love to see what foundations people are using. And I feel like most of us use more than one foundation at the same time, so I think it's interesting to see what's kind of on your on your rotation when it comes to foundations. So I will start with the foundation that I'm wearing today, and it's actually a foundation that I've had for over a year, and I have totally forgot about it in the last last several months. And it's the Hourglass Immaculate Foundation. Now. I didn't really love it at first. I had it in the shade Nude, and even though the shade description seemed like it would match me, it didn't match me very well, so I ended up giving it away to one of my friends. And then I thought, you know, I would try it again because it's, by the description, this seems to be the foundation of my dreams. It is designed for oily, acne-prone people. It's supposed to help fade acne marks. It's supposed to be this magical foundation. I just never really got along with it. And I thought I would try it again, and this is the shade Light Beige, and the name is very misleading because I don't think this is a light beige color at all. I find it to be very medium. I actually had to self-tan my neck a couple of nights ago in order to get this to match. I think the problem was that when I first started using it, I was using either a foundation brush or my fingers to apply it, and that just did not really go that well. The foundation sets super quickly. It's a liquid to powder formula. So it's really not ideal to apply with your fingers because you do not have enough time to work with it and it just kind of sets and it ends up looking patchy and weird. But I tried it with the Beauty Blender today for the first time and I'm very, very happy with the results. I did not powder this foundation and it's I've had it on for four hours now. And by this time, with almost all foundations I've ever used before, I either had to retouch with powder or I had to blot and I haven't had to do this. And I didn't even powder this foundation. It just kind of sets itself, which is great. So I, I do like it. I'm going to I'm going to continue using it and maybe try a different shade. The shade naming system is just I just don't find it really accurate, so I suggest maybe going into Sephora and swatching things and seeing how, how they go on. But so far, with a beauty blender, this foundation has been really nice. The only other complaint I have about this is that because it's a liquid to powder formula, the pump gets stuck all the time, and it's really, really gross. Like, it just always has like a solid cap in there because the foundation solidifies, it turns into a powder, and it gets the thing stuck. So I find it that you do waste a little bit of product that way, too. Um, next up is a foundation that I absolutely love. Love and I'm almost out of it. It's a Givenchy Tank Couture. I use this in the shade number four. It's called Elegant Beige and the foundation dries darker and this particular shade dries a little bit pink which is not an ideal match for me. Besides that, besides a really limited color selection, this is an amazing formula. It's very long-lasting but hydrating at the same time. It doesn't give off a matte finish. The Hourglass Immaculate, when you first put it on, it, it's like it takes all the life out of your face. I find it to be 
definitely the most matte foundation that I own. But this is a very satin, skin-like finish. I really enjoy it. The coverage is medium, but buildable. And in the winter time, sometimes I don't even have to powder this and it still lasts a long time. So I really like this foundation and I would repurchase it. The next foundation is something comparable to the Givenchy, but it's not quite as long lasting, but it's still a great foundation and it's Smashbox Studio Skin. I have this in two colors. I have it in shade 2.3 and 2.1. One is what I you wear in the summer, and then I recently purchased 2.1 as the winter approaches, and it's a great foundation. I've used it in a lot of videos. It's just, it has a lighter coverage than the Givenchy Teint Couture, and it's, like I said, it's not as long-lasting, but it is cheaper, and it is easier for me to get a hold of, and the color selection is a lot better than Givenchy. So, um, great foundation. I would repurchase this as well. As you can tell, I have repurchased it already. Next up is an old favorite, and it is Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua. I am in the shade... I wear this in the shade B30. This is one of my all-time favorite foundations. It's just so quick and easy to apply. The best way to apply this is with your fingers or a buffing brush sometimes, and it's great. The lasting power is not as good as the foundations I mentioned before, but it's kind of a great weekend foundation I can always rely on because it's very quick, very, very natural skin-like finish, and the coverage is light, but you can definitely build it if you need it on certain areas. I prefer to just use a more of like a medium light coverage foundation all over the face and then just use a concealer on spots that need more concealing, but Vitalumia Aqua is an awesome foundation and it is one of the few foundations that is truly good for all skin types. I know people with dry skin that love this. I know people like me with oily skin that like this. It's just a really nice foundation. The only downside is that it has a very heavy fragrance. Most Chanel uh, foundations have a very heavy fragrance. So if you have very sensitive skin, you might react to that. Another Chanel foundation that I have here is uh, the new Perfection Lumiere Velvet. I have this in the shade B20 and this is a perfect color match for me. And this foundation is very disappointing. I want to love it, and when I, when I freshly apply it on my face, I love it. And the best way to apply this, again, for me personally, I found is to be with fingers. It's really nice the way it goes on. The coverage is beautiful. It's definitely a more medium cover coverage, leaning towards full if you build it up. It's a beautiful finish, but it's just the lasting power is so crappy. I have to blot after about an hour or two hours, even if I powder it, and it just breaks down really badly. It transfers really easily. It's just, it's just not, it just falls short in terms of wear time and longevity for me, but the finish is very beautiful. Maybe if you have normal skin and you don't really have any issues with oils, you might find that this lasts better on your skin. If you have acne scarring that is more a texture texture problem, this foundation does a really good job at smoothing over your skin surface. So it kind of lessens the appearance of deeper acne scars. So I like it for that, but I would definitely not repurchase this just because the lasting power is so crappy. Now the foundation that did all the things that Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet didn't do is the By Terry Cover Expert. I wear this in the shade number 9 and it's called Honey Beige. This was my summer shade. Now I would probably have to go down to shade number 7 or 8, but it is an amazing foundation. It does all the things I love about Perfection Lumiere Velvet in terms of smoothing out the skin texture and smoothing out those, those acne scars, but it has a little bit more coverage and really good lasting power. It does not transfer as easily and it's just a beautiful foundation and it does not have any SPF, it photographs amazingly and I've just been kind of saving this for special occasions but I kind of want to wear it every single day just because it's so perfect. It works well with a beauty blender, it works well with fingers, it works well with a brush, it's very versatile. If I want more coverage, I will use my fingers to apply it. But most of the time I use like a Real Techniques buffing brush to apply it really quickly or a beauty blender if I want a more sheer coverage. It has a very beautiful velvet skin-like finish and I, I absolutely love it. Moving on to a couple foundations that did not really work for me, but they work for me sometimes so I keep them around. Uh, this is MAC Face and Body. I have this in the shade C1. I got this, I believe, last year when I was super pale and I had a really nice skin at the time, so I could get away with very little coverage, but this is just, the coverage of this is just way too light, and it has zero oil control capabilities, so I just, I don't, 
I, right now I just kind of use it to mix in with foundations to make them a little bit lighter but other than that it's just not really the foundation for me I find it hard to work with it sets really weird and I just I don't really love it I wanted to love it because so many people love it but this is just not not that great of a foundation for me another foundation that was just average is the maestro foundation by Giorgio Armani I have this in the shade 4 this is a perfect color match for me and it's the only foundation that I've tried that does not oxidize on my skin it does not dry down darker it doesn't change undertones and the shade number 4 is a really really good color match for me but the only problem I have is with the formula of this it's one of those oil based pigment suspension type of things. It's this new revolutionary formula that's happening right now with foundations and it has a really, it blends like a dream. It's very pigmented. You only need a tiny amount but it clings to dry patches like crazy and I have oily skin but I still have a little bit of dry patches on areas where I have acne that's trying to heal so it's just not, not ideal. If, if my skin was really, really nice and I didn't have those texture problems I think I would really love this foundation, but because it clings to dry patches like nobody's business, I find this really hard to wear. And I'm also really not a fan of this whole dropper thing. I accidentally dropped a drop of this on a pair of pants and I could not get that stain out. I even took them to the dry cleaners and those pants, I had to throw them out. I couldn't remove the stain because it's oil based or something. But the moral is do not drop this on any clothing item because you're not going to be able to get this out and yeah. so this. This is just a, kind of a big disappointment and it's super expensive as well. Next up is YSL Taint Resist. This foundation, I'm not going to go on about it too much because you can no longer get it. It's been discontinued. Um, I was in the shade number 5. It was a great color match for me and I really like this foundation. It was nice. But since then, I've, you know, I've discovered the Smashbox, the Givenchy, the By Terry foundations that I like the same or more so I'm not really as sad as I originally was when I first heard that this was getting discontinued but this was a really nice foundation very lightweight good coverage and had a nice lasting power at the same time those are the, the qualities that I look for in foundation the most and that is about it those are all the foundations that are currently in my arsenal and I'm trying to work through them and use some of them up before I try something new but please let me know what your favorite foundations are what you're currently loving in the comments below or if you have your own channel please make a video about it I would love to find out what foundations you currently have on rotation so if you have any questions leave them below and I'll see you next time bye